Good afternoon, good evening and good morning from wherever you are following us today. We are live from the WISIS Forum 2023 in Geneva. As you are aware, WISIS is a UN process and we work with more than 32 UN agencies to implement the WISIS framework of the WISIS Action Lines for achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm here today with uh, Halima uh, from the International Telecommunications Union who actually facilitates the Action Line C4 on capacity building. So Halima, welcome. And uh, could you please share with us how your Action Line has evolved over the years and give us some concrete examples, maybe country examples and from diverse stakeholder types on how you're implementing it on the ground. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Gitanjali. Um, very interesting question that you're asking this year with the evolution of uh, this action line. Um, if you recall, we started um, mostly with um, the need for digital skills that was created by a proliferation of um, um, e-applications. And um, that changed, you know, when we then uh, moved into accelerated uh, delivery of trainings online, because then we had to start looking at design and development of online uh, learning engagements. Uh, this has uh, now uh, evolved to another level where we are now looking at discussing um, immersive technologies and data and how these can be used uh, to facilitate um, uh, training, design of customized um, training interventions and even developing lifelong learning pathways for, for our learners. So it has been an exciting journey for us and uh, we are currently um, engaging with um, ITC ILO um, uh, the discussions, of course, are still at a very early stage, but we are discussing how they are um, uh, uh, operating and what they are doing in this space of um, the future of um, e-learning. Uh, they, they have uh, very exciting uh, models um, of using holograms you know, to facilitate visual interventions of experts across the world into training interventions. So, yeah, it's a, it's a very exciting um, uh, period that we are in right now. Thank you, Halema. We had more than 250 sessions here at the WISIS Forum, and everybody was mentioning capacity building, the essence of capacity building, the right trainings, uh, access to capacity building. So uh, congratulations on all your efforts, and uh, we hope to hear uh, more uh, about some a few country examples when I get back to you in the second uh, half. Definitely, definitely, Tanjali. I'd like to move on to uh, our next uh, guest, uh, Mr. Jean-Paul Adams from the uh, Economic Commission for Africa. So um, economic commissions, the UN regional commissions, have a very, very important role in the WISIS process because you're implementing them at the regional level. So uh, Jean-Paul, what were your key takeaways this year at the WISIS Forum? It's your first WISIS Forum, so first of all, welcome. First impression. <laughs> <laughs> your first impressions, and we heard about uh, you know LDCs, developing countries, uh, to engage them better in UN processes. Uh, how can we work better together to make this possible? Well, firstly, I think the one of the big advantages of the WISIS process is um, learning from each other's experiences and bringing everything into one space, and therefore helping to maximize the efficient use of resources. And from the regional perspective, it also aligns, it allows alignment of some of the regional strategies in the context of Africa. There's the African Union Digital Transformation Strategy adopted in 2020, and a lot of the areas of implementation of that strategy uh, link in extremely well with the action lines under, under WISIS. And a few of the areas where I think you know, we have really seen progress and where we have been demonstrating that. So for example, um, building the opportunity for African countries to make use of artificial intelligence. Uh, we launched in 2021 the uh, Regional Center on Artificial Intelligence in the Republic of Congo, in Brazzaville, as part of the Denis Sassou Gueso University. Um, we have also recently been reinforcing uh, the uh, capacity of African countries on cybersecurity uh, with the launch of a model law on cybersecurity at uh, last year's IGF um, in Ethiopia. Um, and we are uh, addressing the needs of countries, for example, on digital identity, where countries such as Ethiopia have uh, recently passed laws on uh, digital identity and working with them on the capacity to roll out uh, these types of, of interventions. And the linkages that uh, these types of interventions then have 
uh, for example, linked to the implementation of the African continental free trade area. So really how we can maximize e-commerce opportunities and link that with uh, the productive capacity across the continent. How do we get um, agricultural producers to better be able to send their products across the continent, but also tap in into international markets? And I think during the pandemic, uh, we saw some very interesting examples of how this can be upscaled. And I think the WISIS process is allowing some of those best practices to be shared and then working with developing countries and, and LDCs in particular to be able to tap into those opportunities. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Paul. And as we discussed, you know, uh, there are various ways we can work together to strengthen this collaboration. Uh, a special prize focused on LDC countries uh, could be a, a great idea. Uh, and we look forward to working with you uh, on implementing that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we would now like to move on to FAO. So uh, welcome, Tembani. Uh, Tembani is working towards um, implementing e-agriculture, such an important uh, topic. And uh, Jean-Paul talked about it, uh, Halima talked about it, that, you know, uh, without food security, uh, ensuring that uh, agriculture gets the benefits of technology, of the digital transformation, and is not left behind. So uh, can you give us some key takeaways, Timbani, of how your action line has evolved? And what are some of the real uh, projects that uh, have stayed with you? And can you share some examples? Thank you very much, Jitandi. I'm very happy to be here and uh, very nice to have uh, to collaborate with uh, colleagues here in the WISIS, uh, WISIS process. For sure, the digital transformation has been very much alive in the agricultural sector. Uh, COVID has really uh, exacerbated the need or increased the need for agri digital agri transformation. For example, to get the food from the farm to the fork, as we say it. Um, a number of uh, initiatives have really, really been very, very important for us. I would mention key key ones that have been highlighted before, such as uh, the ones that assure data, the one that assures agri uh, uh, digital solutions that are reaching to the farmers, the ones that ass assure complements. There are three key flagships I will mention. One is what we call hand-in-hand -hand initiatives. We have, uh, um, this is an in-country based platform where we collect data that is useful to help the countries uh, transform their digital agri, um, agri um, uh, systems. And then the second one we call it digital village initiatives. We are rolling out a program across the world on digital villages to ensure that we provide solutions at a country level. This has been very, very successful and is rolling very well. And then the third one that is actually putting innovation to e-agriculture, uh, the digital agriculture and innovation hubs. Uh, in four countries I will mention, in Ethiopia, Morocco, Dominica, and uh, Grenada. In those countries, we're setting up uh, innovation hubs to allow the countries to um, assimilate data from FAO, expertise from FAO, and from their partners to solve the uh, agri-food systems that challenges that they have. And these are supposed to be engines where solutions are made. So taking into advantage what we have from FAO and what we have from the ecosystems in agriculture to solve these problems. You mentioned a very good statement that we mention a lot in FAO, leaving no one behind. We don't want to leave no one behind. So our strategic framework thinks about what we call four betters and then leaving no one behind. In this way, we are trying very much to ensure that the solutions that we discuss here in the WISIS process go to the uh, grassroots levels. So the digital device that we always mention, we should be very inclusive. We should make sure that the farmer is at the center. We should ensure that the technologies don't uh, create a gender gap. All these are the aspects that we saw coming out from this WISIS discussion. And also the capacity development. We are also thinking on how to build capacity of our farmers, smallholder farmers, our different stakeholders to assimilate these technologies so that they can improve the, uh, the agri-food system transformation and also that we can ensure that no one um, uh, goes hungry by ensuring that the technology is put on the farm, also in the uh, agri-food systems or in the value chains, straight to the market, straight to the table. Everyone else has to be able to benefit through assimilating these technologies. Thank you, Timbani. We have heard that, you know, how uh, e-agriculture practices have uh, also led to, uh, you know, uh, to stoppage of wastage of food, mm -hmm. you know, which is really a big problem in so many countries that there is uh, ample food, but it is 
uh, wasted because, because of no proper value chain that you uh, just described. So um, thank you so much. Uh, I'll do another round uh, with uh, our speakers and uh, I would just now like to highlight the key challenge in one sentence, please. What is the key challenge for capacity building implementation? I uh, thank you, uh, Gitanjali. Uh, the key challenge in one sentence is a, is a steep one, but let me <laughs> say, <laughs> try, let me give it a shot. When Tambani was speaking, one of the things that came to my mind was uh, one of the activities that we have in ITU. Um, it's actually an initiative that we call the Digital Transformation Centers Initiative, which is focused at digital skills development at the grassroots level. And um, uh, we have seen a lot of strides in this space. Um, in the three years that we have been um, running this initiative, we've managed to reach about 160,000 citizens. And this is uh, people in remote areas and very uh, you know, hard to reach areas around the world. In the case of Ghana, for example, in just one country, we've been able to reach about 45,000 um, individuals uh, from different categories, uh, women entrepreneurs, youth, um, um, uh, out of school youth, uh, uh, some graduates here and there, but mostly we are trying to get to the digital literacy level and build capacity there, which I think is um, is nicely linked to, to what you mentioned, uh, Tambani, in relation to e-agriculture. We find this is the space um, where uh, there's a lot of need, and this is where our challenge is, uh, Gitanjali, reaching this hard to reach uh, community. So the challenges we are facing in this space include uh, uh, the, the normal ones that we hear, requirement for resources, um, you know, the, the, the technical ability, you know, the te technophobia to start with, you know, people in these uh, rural, I don't even want to use rural because rural can be urbanized in some instances, but, you know, this hard to reach areas, they, they shy away from the use of technology for a lot of other reasons. So managing this, uh, dealing with the behavior change, before we even introduce the basic digital skills um, is, a, is a big challenge. It's resource intensive. It requires a lot of collaboration and networking. And we believe uh, forums like uh, the WISIS provides us a platform uh, for dialogue uh, to begin these discussions and to see how we can collaborate with like-minded organizations um, to be able to, to reach this, um, these communities. Uh, yes, mm. uh, Halima, indeed, uh, even uh, mm. you know, localization is really important. Local Definitely. languages, mm. uh, you know, reach it for loc reaching out to the local uh, community, uh, the local languages, uh, finding a local leader who can inspire them. So mm. these are like uh, yeah. real... Yeah, Concrete. these are real life uh, challenges yes. that uh, we are facing on the ground. So, you know, as ITU in the previous years, we have been uh, telling you what we have been doing in the upper end of the of the continent yes. with uh, advanced digital skills. But we, we are in touch with uh, the, the local communities. We are getting there. Um, we are we are addressing the needs that are emerging, you know, with um, with individuals in uh, uh, different um, ITU member states. Excellent, excellent. Mm. Thank you, Halima. Mm. Uh, so Jean-Paul, uh, we'll go from Halema to you, of course, highlighting the uh, main challenges that you face in your region, Africa, as uh, uh, for implementing the whole range of action lines, right, from uh, ICT infrastructure to uh, climate change to, you know, uh, capacity building, cybersecurity. So what, has, what is the key, uh, what is the main challenge? The main challenge in Africa remains uh, infrastructure gaps. Uh, and unfortunately, this is likely to worsen as we see um, a more challenging global environment in terms of investment. Uh, and we are seeing flight of capital away from uh, developing markets. So African countries were doing relatively well uh, in terms of attracting investment into their ICT sectors. And that includes as well on the regional level, looking at, uh, for example, uh, fiber optic cables covering multiple countries and regions. Uh, but this is at risk at present, and there needs to be a sustained focus and strategy to channel resources into countries that need this acceleration in digital infrastructure. Thank you, Jean-Paul. Of course, infrastructure, um, ITU is the lead facilitator for uh, implementing the action line on infrastructure. And we look forward to working closely with you in uh, 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 making some advances uh, in the region. Uh, we'd like to move over to FAO. Uh, so, Timbani, what's the key challenge in e-agriculture currently? So, for we, the greatest challenge we do have is just the challenge of food. Uh, just to, to give you an, an, an example, the world produces more food than it needs, but we do have many people who are hungry. Mm -hmm. 
Okay? So we call this is the food challenge, and it is multifaceted. So there are other issues that contribute to this uh, situation. The food, maybe, it, as you mentioned, one of it, that maybe the food that is produced on the farm to, due to some losses cannot get to, to the markets. Maybe there are environmental issues that are there and other humanitarian solutions. So the, the challenge is how do we uh, use e-agriculture as a way to solve the global uh, food challenge? How can we use technologies and adopt technologies from uh, resource-challenged uh, countries to the resource-enabled uh, countries? How do we ensure that all these countries are able to adopt technologies? How do we also make sure that technology doesn't make the problem worse? Okay, Because then we have to be averse on the risks that technology are there. So we have worked very well with a number of stakeholders, including ITU, including other uh, UN agencies, to come up with strategies at a policy level that can help governments into how they can implement and develop digital and e-agricultural strategies that can allow for the investments that my colleague has just mentioned in these particular areas. And then the second area is always capacity development. We talk of capacity. Let's build capacity, but capacity at, at all the tires of the of, of this ecosystem. Let's talk about farmers. Let's talk about the youth. Let's talk about the value chain actors. Let's talk about government. Let's talk about private sector. It is needed that we create this uh, because technology will keep changing, but the policies and also the rules of engagement, once they are clear, we have the right investment to our um, uh, needed uh, farmers that can able to produce more. Uh, also, we, we say farmers, but also all other producers, maybe fisheries, forestry, in FAO, we look at all of them as producers. So we really need good investment by looking at policy environment, by looking at capacity development actions that we can do, by looking at innovation as an, uh, as an, as an element, how can we innovatively use what we know, what we have, so that we produce more. And also, how can we get good financing for these resources, in especially these digital solutions dis that we need to upscale this problem. So we, we, we really have a great opportunity here. And this WISIS process is a very, very good platform that allows us to work together within the UN system to address the challenges that I think that are the core values of the WISIS actions anyway. So uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me today. Uh, so we heard about the essence of capacity building, the importance of uh, localization. Uh, thank you, Halema. Jean-Paul, you spoke about the implementation of the WISIS framework at the regional level, uh, importance of how um, you know financing models, financing for ICTs, uh, uh, and good cooperation is so important. Uh, and of course, Tembani, uh, you uh, may highlighted the fact that uh, a process process does exist and uh, we should uh, work together to ensure that e-agricultural uh, policies are implemented well so that no one is ever hungry anymore. So thank you very much for uh, joining us today and uh, we will be joined by other UN agencies uh, and other Action Line facilitators in upcoming interviews.